first one, Mark, UEC. you know, uh, UEC, very, very, very similar analysis to what you're looking at CCJ, but I actually think this chart's cleaner. I think you got a slightly cleaner chart here on UEC than you even have on C, uh, CCJ. You're looking at this intraday analysis here, and I'm going to break that down here in a second. But when you see this type of snap back and then stick the landing, I have not even looked at the intraday mark. I, I didn't know this was one of your picks, but I'm willing to bet you can see some pretty decent intraday zones to, to, for stop loss management. And that to me is so important that you can see a very consistent intraday level that you're comfortable putting a stop loss under. And I see two levels that are pretty comfortable for, for me based on the step system method, methodology that, that we utilize at tackle trading. I see the first one at 27 with the backstop there at about 263. And so you can very easily get a stop loss underneath one of these intraday zones here where you feel comfortable. And, and, and I would start it at the 263. I think that is ultra aggressive at the 27. You're not taking that much and you got some wick analysis. So just get a stop loss underneath there. And, and so when you're looking at the stop loss, you're saying, yeah, I got a clean stop loss I can utilize. Or excuse me, I got a clean technical condition of where I need to put a stop loss. You know, when you're looking at it from a, and you see that over here, right? Two six there, you do got a two five eight wick over there. I'd probably just get it underneath 258 just to make sure I get out of that. But then when you look at it from a triggering perspective on a break, uh, on, on the intraday, you got this 2.9 level right there that that is the high of today. You do got a wick that's on the intraday. Don't really care about that. I think you got a pretty clean trigger at 2.9. So stop loss underneath 2.58, entry above 2.9. These are all technically driven. Those are both fairly clean. Target on UEC is going to be a little bit more difficult given the fact that you got some vol you got some volatility here, obviously, but you're probably targeting somewhere up into this range, 326 by 367. Let's just see those uh, from the body of 325 to uh, to the to the wick of 367. Let's use that as in that T1 momentum. T2 would be based on you know potential average yield or I'm going to say Fibonacci, Tim, because I just, I only use Fibonacci as a way to confirm potential average yield targets, mm -hmm. but nope, you are not going to look here, but for now you're probably looking at somewhere around a $4 target on the secondary target for 410 in that range, because it's 410, backstop of four, uh, of four. I think you're targeting three, two, five by four. That's a good trade. I think it's a clean setup and it gives you an alternative to CCJ. You know, typically I'm like CCJ, 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 love the snapback here on CCJ. You know, I, I, I that's, that's, that's the play. It's dirty, sexy money. That's the play that I, I feel, but the intraday analysis is not as strong on CCJ as it is UEC. I like the the, the technical setup behind UEC, Mark. Um, yeah, I, I, that, that, I like that one. Your other one was uh, a DNN, DNN. DNN's got a little bit of a different flavor, obviously, technically here. Uh, a couple things very positive, though. Number one, you do got neutrality in the short term. You do have a double bottom at that, you know, uh, slightly south of the one handle. You do have a double top right there at 130. So you do have a double top, double bottom, which means this is neutral versus what you were looking at in your other two stocks. CCJ bullish uptrend with the snapback bull retracement. Uh, UEC bullish uptrend with momentum with the bullish flag based pattern. This one's more neutral based on the pivot confirmation of the double top, double bottom. Now, when, uh, when you're looking at that, I don't think you can buy the snapback re, uh, retracement in a double top type scenario. But what you're looking at is saying, I love this increase in support from this. I absolutely love this. And what I love about it is the last time it ran from 97 cents to a buck 30, it got beat back down. The last time it ran from a dollar uh, from that exact same level to a buck 30, it got beat back down. 
it can't run 33 cents before it gets tired, guys. Well, now it only has to run from a buck 11, which puts that into breakout territory. And breakouts can't have momentum. And so whereas I do think the snapback retracements and, and flags on CCJ and UEC can be triggered, DNN, I think you're thinking you're looking at this as a positive, but only into the breakout of the double top at 130. For the first time in trash that makes cash history, Matt talked more about my stocks than I did. Listen, finally get a technical setup and I can talk about it. <laughs> That's not garbage. And there's Technical not analysis <laughs> is a nice bonus in the world of penny stock land. <sighs> Maybe it should be a requirement. Oh, no. I, 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 oh, okay. I, I, I just, no, I just no, shirked not, it. He's like, no, what are you talking about? You don't need a trend in penny stock world. You don't need anything. You need I just need, I just need Chico Fox. <laughs> well, Mark, two there that were well received. Some I, good I, technical I, setups. Both, both, both of them technically set up. Obviously, we're talking CCJ, which is which is dirty, sexy money, not yeah. penny stock. Yes, dirty, sexy money is infinitely better than penny stock. I know that the name does not suggest that, but they it's are just a higher class version of my it, penny stock world. Mm -hmm. That's all. That higher class, there's a substantial difference in that higher class. Yeah. But I do, I do take the point, and it is a fair point. There's no doubt about that. You got to pick one of the two in, in in UEC versus DNN, though. If you are playing that, to me, I I I like the UEC with momentum a little bit more than the increase in support breakout potential of DNN. But that's me. I have more exposure to UEC than I do DNN. But I, I like both my positions. I plan on playing them long term. Yeah, and UEC, I mean, you could see some pretty decent trades. If it doesn't even trigger, let's say you get stopped out, you're still looking at support at 2.5, saying if 2.5 oh, those confirmed, deeper pullbacks yeah. on CCJ, on UEC. This trade might it, not – yeah, if this trade doesn't work out, you're going to re-up at 2.5. Like, like, yeah, like just on. Yeah, so – like I, I got one, know, though, Chucky. You I, convinced I want to me. You convinced me, and you said you didn't like the railroads. Correct? Uh, no, I said I like the space. I just think I, th I like other areas in the space okay. better than the railroads. Well, I'm going to talk about some railroads in your neck of the woods, bro. Okay. Dude, there's no <laughs> railroads under five bucks. Yes. Oh, there there's is. a, that's an equipment company. Yes, you're right. They use rail. They're not Norfolk. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I'm loosely saying space, bro, but we're no, talking. No, 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 no. Okay, but REL, Freight Car America here. Now, technically, I like the deeper pullback here, Chucky. So this isn't a snapback trigger with momentum. This is deeper pullback analysis. So uh, you see the deeper pullback here? Clip to nine, clip to 20, clip, uh, like rolled that nine. Look at this, Mark. Look at Dude. Look how rolled that nine. Janet went on a journey, and Rel just rode it all the way down. Look at that. Now look at it. Look at it. Turn around. And then today, that's using it as positive. Okay. You got confirmation today, but what type of confirmation are we talking about is important. Let's talk about confirmation on the weekly chart. That's what is important. Now you look at this on a weekly chart, Mark, and I'm willing to bet you are a little bit more excited right here on real on that weekly chart as you are on the on the daily chart, correct? Bro, you already had me. I'm I've already bought shares and covered them. I'm already like I'm, like I what, thirty seconds. I, I in? Got, I no. I saw. I listen. No. You took away all my analysis. I, like, I, 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 I could see it. Up, it was bro. awesome. I can explain. He saw 168 percent. I know exactly what he saw, <laughs> and he's like, "Okay." And, and, I'll do and it. he saw. Wait a second. Okay. Before the pandemic, this stock was 16. No, I, I, well, I, I Matt, this is the opening. Uh, First of all, it's not a 168 percent volatility. No. It's only 113. Let's just yeah, not get exaggerate. Right. You know, and it's only 220 on the week. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's so 168 in May. <laughs> so yeah, we don't need, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> like, don't confuse um, me with the facts. It's fine. Okay, you're right, but that's a positive for how Mark approaches this. <laughs> I don't know why, but it is. Yes, okay. it is. Well, again, when you're looking at that we uh, the daily chart, this is a whole bunch of chop here, right? When you look at that daily chart, look at all that chop, look at all that chop. But I'm looking at this right here. I, this I sold from right. I'm sold from right space. 
technical pattern. I love that I, weekly that, okay. technical pattern. Tim, what's that number there? Uh, three bucks. That's significant, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. See the old resistance? See the new support? Coincides with a significant whole number? Oh, we're lining them up there. And then you see this. Look at that three handle right there. All technically. And, and, oh, clean. hold on. I'm not I, done. I, it, I, it, it's this, I got it. Doesn't oh matter what the earnings number is. Okay. Mark taught us last week that <laughs> earnings are not important to penny stocks. I'm going to drink my okay. coffee. <laughs> you, you should on this one. I'm deep diving. Okay. Look at this momentum. Look at that. Now look at the subtle change in behavior over here. Head and shoulders, breakout, confirm. Now I don't think we're recovering 20. You don't have to. Yeah. But you don't have to to make this really good. I like the weekly chart here. I like a position style trade on row, Mark. What do you think? Already in. No, I, I'm already in. I, and, and I, Tim, and even with your little subtle jabs, I know you like this deeper pullback. Here. It's a wonderful analysis. I love the weekly chart. I love the reversal potential and the characteristics. I just personally will, will wait for earnings and I'll put it on my trash list. I just have, that's my rule. Uh, you know, when I'm doing swing position trades, I don't hold through earnings. So. Yeah, because look at all of the volatility that occurs on earnings in penny stock land. It's just, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Do you know what earnings season is in a penny stock? Every random Tuesday. It's a buying opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> every, Tuesday, every day's earnings in penny stock land. Um, listen, I don't know if I if what Mark is saying is true or not, because this is not <laughs> my world. It matters in my world, which typically means it matters here too. I love the technical analysis. I, I love it. I love, I love the space. They make freight cars, right? Listen, and honestly, even I if love you the space. A positive earnings response and you're waiting on the breakout of four, I still think a breakout of four can be triggered with momentum. Mm -hmm. So if, if your thing is wait for earnings, then wait for They're earnings. Fine, sure. Right. Um, but you're, but I don't, unless you get a blowout one way or the other, I still think you got some analysis here. Yeah. I like yeah. it. I do as well. And I wasn't talking your book. I was talking his. <laughs> oh, no. Listen, I you seriously appeal to Mark, Mark share... instantly. Like for playing the game, the parameters of the game, you win the game. So you listen, absolutely appeal to, listen, to what Aren't this you supposed is. to play the game to the author of the game? Is that why yeah. you, I figured out why you never win a game? Are we talking about playoffs? Playoffs? Like, like, no. like Tim's like, hey, let's go play a game of football, but he plays baseball rules. Like you play. What are you talking about? to win no and i'm gonna dive game. deep because i did my minimum allocation uh just on the initial analysis i'm gonna dive deeper and see and see if this uh little freight car well, manufacturer and, and has just some to legs. be clear here you said you didn't like railroads i didn't have a pick for for trash that makes cash i went and looked at railroads and found a railroad that was my level of analysis so do your own homework chucky Dude, dude, that's just why we're a team. Haven't you ever played this Monopoly? You gotta like this the railroads. True. Pick them all four up. Uh, listen, I was gonna say that. Like, like Tim's like, do you like the railroads? Like, who doesn't like the railroads? Like, what are we talking roads. about? Nickel and dime. That's like not getting Australia in risk. <laughs> the last risk game we played i did get australia and one that's because uh, you wind your way to it yep absolutely i have to I have to do it i like this right. analysis i love the play i had one extra but i cannot top these guys i know uh, we're not Can't, we're no i've no. seen yours <laughs> forget that thing give me swn let's go light it up Re energy play relative strength breaking out instead of pulling back even though energy was on a pullback southwestern energy they do a lot of natural gas as well as some crude processing mark so you're not just getting uh your crude play here you're getting some ng as well and it's looking really good on do that you weekly want energy sure. i'm not sure a little bit of both they do a little they do energy. a little bit of everything so um, T Southwestern, I got to look into it. Um, but yeah, you're not looking at this on a daily chart at all. You're looking at this on a weekly chart. It smooths out that volatility the position style. I could, I can certainly understand crude has energy has seasonality right now. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that works out. You got pretty, pretty clean breakout here. And, and, it, and South, uh, Southwest, I know this company, they're actually not a very volatile penny stock. Volatility is only in the fifties or so. 
This is uh, a weekly chart, Mark, and this thing has only went from 250 to 450. That's not very volatile. It's <laughs> not, not well, not for penny. Listen, no, not for uh, penny. And, and I'm actually, uh, for interesting penny note about Southwest: they actually have weekly options. Uh, not, really? not, 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 not common in penny stock land. Uh, so a lot of volume, relatively low volatility for this area of the investing universe. Somehow weekly I know options. part of this 224. <laughs> like. Uh, and pretty tight ass, tight bit, big bit yeah. ass spreads. He's so, part of the volume. Yeah. So, yeah. So, do you at, like it, Mark? Janet acting as support. There. Or do you need 50% more implied volatility to like it? Are we no, good with 50? Like Dude, I like we're, only, it. we're only, we're only 60%. The only thing I don't volume. like is that we're at the, the resistance range. I would like to see it break out of that. If, sure. if it ain't triple digits, it's digits it really needs to get its act together for more is it really, really underbelly it, it is not 100 percent. well it, it, it is a little too stable for my taste <laughs> but you know like i still would go out with it so oh, like if goodness. you can't blow up an account it's just too stable mm-hmm. <laughs> i kid i kid I that kid. is our all Mondays. jokes aside all jokes aside technically speaking those are some pretty decent charts